Hey, thanks for joining me. So what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Uh, does the Bible condone it? Does the Bible condemn it? Does the Bible say that it is good and appropriate behavior? Or does the Bible say that it is not appropriate behavior? Does the Bible call it sin? These are some issues we're going to look at very quickly today. So if you have your Bible, feel free to open to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. And we'll begin to get an idea of where in uh, how the Bible has spoken regarding the issue of homosexual behavior. Uh, issue, uh, sorry, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13 states, If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. So here we have this behavior listed as an abomination. Uh, if we go on to Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through verse 27, Paul writes, Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. So here we have this behavior uh, associated with things that are impure, a dishonoring of the body, uh, dishonoring passions, uh, contrary to nature, shameless acts, and they received the penalty for their, their error. The error is the homosexual act. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8 through 10. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to to sound doctrine, in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. Uh, so here homosexuality is in a list of sinful behavior that includes those who beat their parents, murderers, uh, enslavers, and of course homosexual uh, behavior. Uh, most people, even those who try to defend homosexuality as not a sin, would agree that every other act in this list is a sin. So if homosexuality is approved by God, then why would it be in this list of grievous sins? Uh, so we see it every time that the issue is mentioned in the Bible that it is not in a positive light. It is actually listed and categorized as behavior that is not holy that is regarded as sin. And we have to remember that it's not the culture that makes the rules, it's not even the Supreme Court of a land that makes the rules truly regarding what is right and wrong. But the ultimate creator of rules is God himself, and he has spoken on this issue through his word. Uh, one last passage I want to read, one of my favorite ones, because it ends with such a such such good news. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, ne neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, uh, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So here Paul is speaking about this unrepentant, continual sin where the people will not turn from their sin. Homosexuality is included in this list as well as other sexual immorality, including adultery, is included in this list. So it's not just homosexual sin, but is heterosexual sin as well uh, that is listed in this category. But it says of these people who are involved in this unrepentant sin that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the good news is in verse 11. And I want to leave with a good note today. It says, and such were some of you. Let me repeat that again. And such were some of you, he writes to the, uh, the church now in Corinth. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. This is the good news. Um, that, that 
there is forgiveness, there is sanctification, there is justification, no matter what sin you have been involved in. And here, Paul lists this act of sins uh, of, of people who will not inherit the kingdom of God, but at the same time, he says, such were some of you, but they had been saved by the very same gospel that can save anyone, and it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That God sent His Son to die on the cross, to live a perfect life, to take the wrath that we deserve for all of our sin on Himself, that whoever believes in Him shall be rescued, saved, and cleansed from their sins. So, what are we? what is the bottom line of this? Does the Bible speak about the issue of homosexuality? Yes, it does. It definitely does. It is never seen in a positive light anywhere in Scripture, culturally. Homosexuality and homosexual behavior may or may not be seen as wrong. Uh, the popular vote, uh, what is popular, changes from time to time. Criminally, homosexuality may or may not be seen as wrong. Some countries it is, some countries it is not. Personally, uh, you may or may not believe that homosexual behavior is right or wrong. Everyone's opinions vary. But today I'm only trying to express what has God said in His Word. Biblically, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that this behavior is sinful. And again, the good news today is that there is always hope for anyone who is willing to confess their sin, repent of that sin, turn from it, and believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we can only be saved by the one Savior, Jesus Christ. If you want to look into this a little bit more, a few quick books I read over the last few months. My, probably my favorite and quickest one is this one. Uh, very thin, very easy to give to someone that has questions about this and also to help you. Uh, also, this is probably my next favorite one. Uh, enjoyed it. Again, pretty thin. Nice to keep in your house and to uh, give to someone else that might have questions. And thirdly is this one. For uh, <clears throat> extra reading, feel free to look into that. It's a hot topic today that a lot of people are wanting to know the biblical truths. Where does the Bible speak? How does it speak on it? So <clears throat> I encourage you to look further into this so you'll be prepared to give a defense of what God has said in His Word regarding the issue of homosexuality. I hope you have a great day.